Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. So today we're going to talk about dysglycemia and Hashimoto's. So dysglycemia, uh, glycemia refers to blood sugar. Dys means it's screwed up. <laughs> it means it's dist. Okay, so basically uh, dysglycemia can be high blood sugar, low blood sugar, but it's usually somebody bouncing back and forth between high and low blood sugar. This is one of my favorite topics, so I'll, I'll do my best to try and keep it less than an hour and a half long here. <laughs> Okay, this will just be a couple of minutes. Because this is huge. This is huge, 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 huge. Why is it huge? Because everybody blows it off. What do, I, what do I mean by everybody? I mean your doctors blow it off. Low blood sugar is, in the medical field, not considered a problem until it's below 60, which is almost like having no blood sugar. And you're passing out and you can't stay awake and you're like, you know, this is like the diabetic who hasn't taken their insulin or, you know, and they've run out of, and they've run out of sugar. Um, but that's a pathological entity. Low blood sugar is just, you don't, you, 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 you don't eat and you get irritable, you get shaky, you get agitated, you crave sweets, you get tired, maybe you get trembling. All of these things are all of these symptoms are relative to you having a blood sugar drop. When you get a blood sugar drop, it affects your, um, it affects your brain, obviously. You get ar ir irritated, agitated, those types of things. Because your, your brain needs proper blood sugar. Uh, everything, your whole, all your cells need proper blood sugar. But your brain gives you the most notable um, symptoms. And when you're getting those symptoms, you are creating, there's a huge amount of inflammatory and what's called oxidative stress. And so both of these uh, chemical entities will then cause your uh, antibodies to your thyroid to be attacked by inflammatory responses. And then, and then ultimately those inflammatory responses will attack your thyroid if you're a Hashimoto's patient. And then there's insulin resistance. So low blood sugar below 60 is, is what your medical doctor would be all excited about. But they're really not excited about low blood sugar when you're getting irritated and shaking and have anxiety and stuff. They just say, you know what? You just have anxiety and you're irritable and shaky. Here, take some, you know, take some Xanax or take some Prozac or take some sort of a, you know, anti-anxiety medication. They'll, and, and they'll look at your labs and, and if you're, Blood labs are normal, but you have all of those symptoms, they're not gonna treat you for low blood sugar. Here's the problem. Low blood sugar, can, your low blood sugar can be present for seven to 10 years before it shows up on your blood test. So you really gotta go by the symptoms. Same thing with high blood sugar. We'll use the terms insulin resistance, because these are terms that doctors will use with you, or pre-diabetic. Once you get to diabetes, you're diabetic, you have high blood sugar. It stays high until you do something about it. But when you have low blood sugar that's not in the low, low, low range where they go, oh, you really have low blood sugar. Or when you have high blood sugar that's pre-diabetic or insulin resistant. An awful lot of doctors don't do anything about that. They just think, ah, eh, it's not diabetes yet, so we'll wait until it's diabetes uh, and treat it. Maybe the insurance companies won't let them treat it. Until, it's, until you're diabetic type two, but it is huge. I mean, prediabetes is the cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is like half of the infertility in this country. It's, it's the number one cause of small fiber neuropathy for those of you who have sharp shooting, burning pain in your feet and your doctors have told you you gotta live with it forever. It's prediabetes. 50% of the time, that is prediabetes. Relative to Hashimoto's, prediabetes symptoms are Prediabetes, the main prediabetes symptom is I fall asleep after meals. That's really the big one. The main low blood sugar one, by the way, the main low blood sugar symptom is I eat and I feel better. You shouldn't feel better. You should just get hungry, eat, and your hunger should go away and then you should go on with it. You should not be like, I'm tired, I'm shaky, I'm irritable, I'm and then you eat and all of a sudden you're wonderful. Okay, that's low blood sugar. That's the main, main, main uh, uh, sign of low blood sugar. 
for high blood sugar, the main sign is, is fatigue after meals. You all have cravings of sweets and maybe you urinate too much and maybe you're having trouble losing weight, but all those can be other things. Okay, but, but fatigue after meal is only two things. One of them can be food sensitivities, but by far you eat, you're fatigued after meals, you probably have insulin resistance or prediabetes. Oh, but my tests were normal. Same thing. There hasn't been enough damage yet to your adrenals, to your pancreas and your liver, or the cell sites where the blood sugar gets in. So that's the group of organs that control your, your, your blood uh, sugar control, okay? So there hasn't been enough damage to them yet to start showing up on blood tests. So again, same thing. Re, uh, I just read an article not three months ago that said that it can take up to 10 years for uh, prediabetes to show up on, on your lab. Meanwhile, you're like expressing all eight or 10 symptoms of prediabetes and your doctor going, no, you're fine, really. Oh, I don't know why you're, you know, I don't know why you have polycystic ovarian syndrome. I just had that yesterday. I just had a case of that yesterday. Um, very, very bright person, went to a very well-known doctor. I said, do you realize that your polycystic ovarian syndrome is from prediabetes? And she said, no, no. She's been going to fertility doctors for like two years now. So this is stuff that you need to know. Now, relative, all of that screws up antibodies to your thyroid. You have to understand your thyroid has, has an effect on every single cell your, in your body. And in return, <laughs> and in return, pretty much anything that creates any type of an inflammatory process then will increase the antibodies against your thyroid that tell your immune system to attack and start to create an attack against your thyroid, which damages your thyroid. So, so, so if you have swings from, I get irritable, jittery, shaky, uh, I wanna snap off my husband's head or my wife's head. Uh, if you get all that, you get, you get I, I, I get to all the way to fatigue after meals and craving sweets, which is you going back and forth between high and low blood sugar, which can happen with either one of them. That is annihilating, that is annihilating your thyroid. And, and, and it's also annihilating your brain for the record. And it's also screwing up your sleep and it's doing just a ton of other things, which is why I said it's so important. I mean, I mean in, a, if, in, a, in a case of Hashimoto's, um, if, the, if, if, if a person's limited to their abilities to do things like purchase supplements and stuff like that, the best places to start is, is diet and blood sugar. Diet and blood sugar, diet and blood sugar, and, and, see how, and see how you feel. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics, or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.